Hi, how are you doing? Stuart Cox, physio here, doing some physio analysis because uh, one of the things that a lot of physios don't do is enough analysis of just common people in various um, movement professions, whether it be sport, dance, whatever. So what I'm going to do is do a series of some of the best movers around and see what you guys think and have a look at what they're doing and what possibly they could be targeting in terms of getting that control of movement. So let's get into these and see what we can find. So first one we're going to go with is LeBron James career highlights. Now, I fell out of touch with basketball for a while. So LeBron James wasn't quite as familiar to me as, uh, say, back in the day of uh, Jordan, uh, Kemp, um, Barkley, those guys. Kemp was my hero at the time because I was wanted to be able to jump and dunk like that guy, but fortunately I'm not 6'10 and I don't have that natural ability. But LeBron is going to go down as probably one of the greatest uh, players. I know statistically some people say he is the greatest. So let's have a look at LeBron here in career highlights and see what he moves like, what possibly he could do. And then we may later on actually go back and have a look at what he's like now versus what he was like earlier in his career. So let's have a look here. Career highlights, do, 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 slapping hands. Sounds like a great stick. Alley, you, boom. Obviously, he's got a high vertical leap. I mean, the guy's 6'9", so it's not that high for him to jump. That's a very good block. So let's just pause it there. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice about this guy is that he has an ability to adapt his game rather well. And he is not purely just a power player. He might be six foot nine, but he moves very, very well for a guy that size. Uh, we've just seen him shoot a three pointer there. And obviously his technique is very good, which means he just practices like crazy. So to be able to do that, it's not just ability. That comes down to just practice. As you can see, his elbow is high, he's got nice and straight. I remember those points from my high school coaches. But obviously this guy's taken it to the next level. He has an obsession. And you have to have an obsession to get to this level. All right. Okay, dishing off, yeah, and he's got great balance. So we're talking about the way he moves down low means that he's got very good balance across his feet and ankles. So that's a lot of sidestepping, plyometric kind of work there in order to have the reflexes to be able to generate power from the sides of your ankles. So uh, you see a lot of skippers and boxers work very hard on this so that they, they don't roll their ankles and actually move a lot like a dancer. Um, one of the uh, best boxing coaches I ever had was a guy from Kazakhstan who was an Olympic boxer, and he was saying, dance, dance, dance constantly. Didn't have much English, but that's what he focused on. And you can see these great players here generally can move pretty well dancing when you see them celebrate. So what we're looking for is someone who can move quickly, forward, backwards, sideways, with great control without losing control of their upper body so they can control the ball, generate movement um, and fake movement away with their feet so that they're looking like they're going somewhere else with their chest but they're actually going somewhere else with their feet. So that's one of the key things about a lot of sportsmen is that their ability to rotate and control their upper body irrespective of where their feet are pointing. All right, let's play some more. On the back pass, that's yeah, good. Yeah. 
Okay, vertical leap. You want a vertical leap? Vertical leap comes down to a couple of things, and there are lots of good um, jumping coaches out there, like a guy like Jordan Kilgannon, I think, is the king of modern dunking at the moment. There are a couple others who probably say they're great as well. Uh, but what it comes down to is generating fast twitch fiber power and high leverage with high torque. So what I mean by that is you've got to have flexible ankles, flexible knees in terms of getting the range to propel yourself to jump that high and quickly. So again, it comes down to practice, but again, some people are going to have better range in their ankles. Some people are going to have, be a little bit more hypermobile even in some of these joints, which allow them that whippy movement so that they can get that vertical leap. Um, yeah, if you've got really stiff joints, you're probably not gonna move like that. Instead, work on your power game, do something else. You might still be able to generate a bit of, a bit of hops, as it were, but not likely to be this level. Nice. Yeah, he handles the ball well for the guy and clears the lane away. It's a massive block. Poor old Brooke Lopez, that was harsh. Yeah, he's getting way above the rim. And he's strong. Loves that right Tom Hawk. So, when we're talking about someone who's six foot nine, I reckon he probably weighs, it looks like somewhere around the 110, 112 kilo mark. I'm not sure what that is in pounds, it's by 2.2, you can work that out. Yeah, so, He's definitely a large athlete, but he works on his power. He's got flexibility. When he brings that arm back, he's got great chest range. Better than I have, because I've got really tight pecs and shoulders from looking at too many people down here and doing too much computer work. But generally this guy has got flexibility with it, which allows him that power. So he's got explosive height. He works strongly on his upper body as well. So he's got some good power to then be a threatening presence. You can see people back away there. When they see someone that big coming down at that speed, they just move out of the way. And that's a psychological thing as well. They know he's coming, they know it's, he's gonna create a highlight shot. And if you're gonna take it on, you gotta be ready to deal with the consequences, which is you're probably gonna end up with um, a lot of uh, social media telling you how crap you looked when you missed that block. Yeah, so we see that reverse dunk there. He doesn't do them so much anymore, I don't think. Okay. So we can see as a young guy, he's a bit thinner, a bit whippier. Whereas more of the highlights later on are three-pointers. So the guy's working on his shooting, but he's still very athletic and still very good at handling the ball. Block again, that's early on, surely. Yeah, so we can see there, when he arches back, he's got good range across most of his spine as well. So again, he's, he's I think he's quite a uh, more flexible guy than you would probably think. Obviously not like your um, really whippy looking gymnasts who are generally hypermobile, but he's definitely got reasonable flexibility there to, yeah, you can see he's, the way he arches his back, the way his legs come back, the way his legs go apart when he jumps and sprints. He's a flexible guy. Change numbers, number six there. Oh, that's the heat, isn't it? Yep, and when he shoots, he doesn't lose any stability through here. Yeah, 
very good at anticipating play as well. Ball goes up. Yep. Yeah, and again, power. But smooth. So yeah, if you're gonna go into the paint and take on the big boys through there, you've gotta be one of the big boys. And he is strong and quick. And he spots those little gaps and he's quick to execute. So again, this is a lot of quick movements of the arms. Um, I'm sure he do, does a lot of training with you know probably some of that ski machine. He'd probably do some ball throws, but also has good flexibility through the upper back and torso. So his thoracic extension is probably good, lots of cobras. Um, he probably works on his lats and, and triceps and hanging to get that length through the arms as well, if he hasn't just naturally got it. I'm saying if you want to try and do this, you probably need to work on that. Big block. Yeah, so again, if we look at that, arching the back when he goes to that dunk, he's way back, arm back, getting out of the way of the defenders and then executes. Yeah, the guy's definitely got some flexibility as well as strength. So it's not all strength. Don't get obsessed with strength. You gotta also use the range that you can get and try and work on range so that you get elastic um, movement. What's his name? Plastic Man, Stacey Augman, he had a bit of that. Oh, the face guard on, I like that. Yeah, reverse dunk, we've seen it all. I mean, the guy is 6'9", though, so, yeah. So we see him handling the ball there, probably not too well there, but he can regain his balance. He doesn't rotate that much through the torso. Yeah, it's mostly shoulders. Yeah. Shoulder, there's a lot of shoulder flexibility in here and thoracic extension. It's good at thoracic extension, rotation. That's not that flash, it's just someone else coming late, taking the block there. Did you get pretty high there. Whew. This must be heat, three-pointer. Yeah, so we're talking about a guy here who's worked heavily on his game. Let's have a look at that thoracic range. Yep, he's definitely shoulders, good range there. Yeah, he definitely was getting higher when he was younger. Wow. Up and quicker in the paint. So if you want to be quick, you know, you're going to be looking at a lot of quick footwork, a lot of skipping, a lot of sprints. Um, that was pretty impressive of LeBron. You can see why he's one of the best, but he has natural gifts. We're talking about a guy who is massive, but also has speed to go with it and flexibility to go with it. So, you know, if I was a young basketball trying to be more like LeBron I'd be work I'd be skipping like crazy I'd be doing some um, good whippy um, strength stuff as well some strength and power generation from the upper body from here all right that's enough of me I hope you enjoyed that one and uh, look forward to more from Stuart Cox physio on the videos cheers